Okay. So far, we have looked at uh, determinants and we have looked at various properties of determinants. Now, uh, determinants crop in when we are looking at solutions of linear equations. So, suppose you have a set of three linear equations of the form a1x plus b1y equal to b1. And I am taking 3, but I can extend it to any number of equations. So, suppose you have a of linear equations ok. Now, we already saw that the condition for the for these equations to have a solution to have a unique solution is that the the rank the the rank of uh, of the matrix formed by a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 c1 c2 c3 the rank of this matrix has to be equal to the rank of this matrix So, the rank so rank of A, we call this matrix A and this is the augmented matrix A tilde. So, rank of A has to equal rank of A tilde and this has to equal the number of independent variables that is 3. So, if the rank of this matrix is equal to the rank of the augmented matrix and that is equal to 3, then this set of equations has a unique solution. And, uh, now, uh, you can show by simple algebraic manipulations that this solution is given by x is equal to a ratio of, de of determinants and the determinant at the bottom is always a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3, c1, c2, c3 and if you want to determine the first variable x then you replace the column a1, a2, a3 by d1, d2, d3 and you get a matrix d3, b1, b2, ok. And x turns out to be equal to this and you can show this by fairly straightforward algebraic manipulations, ok. Similarly, y is equal to so, the, de the denominator is the same but the numerator now you leave the first row as it is and you replace the second row by d3 and leave the third row as it is. Similarly, one can write for z also. Similarly, for z. Okay. So, so uh, we notice that uh, in the solution of the of these linear equations, determinants appear very naturally, and uh, this can be extended to a solution of more equation. Uh, even you you don't need to have three equations for any number of equations. You can use the same procedure to calculate the values of the variables. Now, uh, a thing you notice is that the, the, de the, the determinant that appears in the denominator is the same ok and uh, this determinant is, is essentially the, de the, the determinant of A. So, it is the determinant of matrix A and, uh, and this determinant cannot be 0 because the solution has the determinant in the denominator. So, determinant A not equal to 0 ok. And it is not hard to show that if determinant, if determinant A is not equal to 0, then imp this implies unique solution. And actually this is also a way to check the rank of this matrix. So, it implies rank equal to 3. So, if the rank of A is 3, 
then the determinant of A is not equal to 0 and vice versa. If the determinant of A is not equal to 0, the rank is equal to 3. Okay. So, the condition for unique solution to exist is that this, this determinant should not be equal to 0 or in other words the rank should be, should be 3. And now it follows that if determinant A equal to 0, okay, then rank less than 3. Okay. Rank has to be either 2 or 1 if determinant A is 0 okay, and vice versa. Okay, so, the determinant is, uh, is intimately connected to the rank and, uh, and uh, a, a way to check a way to check the rank, uh, the, the rank of some matrix is to calculate the determinant and see if the determinant is 0 then the rank is less than 3, if the determinant is not equal to 0 the rank is equal to 3. The next concept that we will discuss is that of the inverse of a matrix. So, the inverse of a matrix. And like the determinant, it is defined only for squares, it is only defined for square matrices. Okay, so, it is defined only for square matrices. Now, the inverse of a matrix, if it is defined, so if A inverse is defined, okay, that means not all matrices have an inverse. Okay, so, so this, this, this directly implies that not all matrices, not all square matrices. have an inverse. Okay. So, 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 this is important to keep in mind. If it is defined, then two things. First one, it is unique okay. and second thing, A a inverse, A inverse A equal to identity. So, so if a matrix is, uh, if uh, if you have a matrix A, okay, the inverse of a matrix, we call this matrix A. If you have a matrix A, then its inverse is denoted by A inverse, okay, and it is unique. And A inverse satisfies A A inverse equal to A inverse A A I. So this is inverse of of matrix A. Okay. And this inverse of a matrix A is also a matrix, it is also a matrix okay. and, uh, and, when, and it, when, when it multiplies A, then you get the identity matrix that is oh, 1 along the diagonals and 0 on the off diagonals. Okay. So, if A is a 3 by 3 matrix, then A inverse is also a 3 by 3 matrix and their product gives the, the identity matrix, the 3 by 3 identity matrix. However, if A is a larger matrix, then A inverse will also be a matrix of the same size and the identity matrix will be the identity matrix of the larger size. Now, remember in general, for matrices A times B is not equal to B times A. So, in general this is not true, it may be true in some special cases, but A, A inverse equal to A, A inverse A and the product is nothing but the identity. Okay. So, in other words, the, the multiplication of A and A inverse is a commutative operation. Okay. So, A, inver A inverse is same as A inverse A. It is not true in general for matrices, but in this case it is true. Okay. So, so, so this is the definition of the inverse of a matrix and now why is the, why is the idea of inverse of a matrix useful and uh, to do this we look at again our, uh, we had the system of equations and uh, we can, we had the system of equations A1x plus B1y 
plus c 1 z equal to d 1 a 2 x plus b 2 y plus c 2 z equal to d 2 and a 3 x plus b 3 y plus c 3 z equal to d 3. Okay. And now, if we define, so define x vector is equal to x y z d vector is equal to d 1 d 2 d 3 and a matrix a is a matrix a 1 a 2 a 3 b 1 b 2 b 3 c 1 c 2 c 3 then we can write we can write these three equations in a simplified form a times x equal to d okay so so this this set of three equations can be written in this form and we have already seen this now suppose i multiply on both sides by a inverse so, suppose I take this and multiply on this side by a inverse. So, I will get a inverse a x is equal to a inverse d. And uh, then you use the fact that a inverse a is nothing but the identity. So, you perform this multiplication first. So, you get x equal to a inverse multiplied by d. Okay. So, what that means is that if you know the inverse of a, then you can easily calculate, you can easily solve this system of equations. So, so uh, this is a system of equations and the goal is to solve for x, y and z. In other words, the goal is to solve for x inverse, uh, for, for x vector and if you know the inverse, then the solution is very straightforward. You just multiply d by, by x to get, uh, by, by a inverse to get the solution. Okay. So, uh, this is the solution of the uh, equations. Okay. So, the, the message is that if you know the inverse of this matrix A, then you can uh, then you know how to solve this system of equations. Okay. So, the inverse is also related to the solution of the of this uh, set of equations. Now, we already said that uh, for a system of equations to have a unique solution, uh, the determinant should not be equal to 0. The determinant of the corresponding matrix should not be equal to 0. Okay. So, so we said that suppose you had, uh, the, we had a times x equal to d. Okay then the condition for unique solution okay so to solve for x x was our matrix x y z and the condition to get unique values of x y z was that this the determinant of this matrix should not be equal to 0 okay now we also wrote that x equal to a inverse multiplied by d okay so what does this imply imply about the inverse okay so uh, what this implies is that in order for a inverse to exist determinant a has to be different from 0 okay so if the determinant of a is 0 then the inverse of a does not exist okay and uh, and this makes it consistent with the idea that that uh, if you if the determinant a was equal to 0, then this is this set of equations does not have a unique solution and in other words, you cannot write this in this unique form. And uh, I should mention right here that this, this very step when you solve a set of equations using matrix methods by using the inverse is the single largest application of matrices in, in various engineering and chemistry applications. So, so, often you set up your problem in a way that you have a large number of equations and uh, you set it up in matrix form and uh, your goal is to invert the matrix and find the solution. 
ok. Now, uh, we can look up some simple properties of inverses. Suppose, you have a matrix A ok and a matrix B and you take the product of these two matrices. What is the inverse of the product of this these two matrices? And clearly, it is equal to B inverse A inverse. Okay, and you can verify this because if I take B inverse A inverse and multiply it by A B, then uh, then 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 you can show that you get the identity matrix. Okay, so the inverse of a product of matrices is the product of the inverses inverse taken in the reverse order. Okay, okay. Now next, uh, suppose you had a matrix that was diagonal, so a diagonal matrix. So, so that means you have, let's say, a one one, a two two, along the diagonals, and all the off-diagonal elements are zero. Okay, so all these off-diagonal elements are zero. Okay, so if you had a matrix like this, then uh, you can show that the inverse of this matrix. So, so uh, if I if I call this matrix D for diagonal diagonal matrix is this, then you can show that D inverse is equal to is also a diagonal matrix, okay. but the elements that appear here will be 1 by A 1 1, 1 by A 2 2, 1 by A n n. Okay, so, if you have this as A n n and it is 0 in the off diagonal elements. And you can show this because if you multiply these two matrices, you multiply this row with this column. So you so a11 into 1 by a11 that will give you 1, and everything else will be 0. And you can show similarly that uh, that uh, when you multiply all these rows with all these columns, you'll just get 1 along the diagonals. Okay. So the determinant, uh, so so the inverse of a diagonal matrix is also a diagonal matrix. Okay. But the elements on the diagonal are the reciprocal of the elements along the diagonal of the original matrix okay. and this also implies that that uh, that a i i cannot be 0. So, none of the elements are 0 ok. So, so for all i ok. So, none of these elements can be equal to 0. So, so in other words none of the diagonal elements can be equal to 0 because if any of these are 0 then the 1 over that element is not defined. Okay. So, so, so diagonal matrix is very easy to calculate the inverse ok. And so, now, now, now this tells us the strategy for calculating the inverse of a matrix ok. This the idea that a diagonal matrix is easy to inver invert gives us a strategy for calculating the inverse of any matrix and that is the following. So, suppose you had a matrix of this form A 1 1, A 1 2, a 1 n, A 2 1 up to A n 1 all the way up to A n n ok. So, we say that uh, A times A times A inverse equal to identity matrix. Okay, so, this is equal to the identity matrix and what one can do is one can do a set of row and a column operations and uh, you convert this to a diagonal matrix and we do the exactly the same set of row and column operations on this matrix ok. So, on the identity matrix ok. So, you do a set of row and column operations to convert this into a diagonal matrix. So, you so you do by various row operations row and column operations you you convert this to diagonal form and you convert it to some uh, you, you finally might end up with d 1 1 and zeros everywhere else equal to. Now, you are going to do the same set of operations on the identity matrix. So, you will get some other matrix you will get some other matrix which is not necessarily diagonal 
or uh, anything like that. And uh, once you have this, now you can multiply on both sides by d inverse. So, so this matrix is d times a inverse and uh, let me call this matrix R. The, this is the result of doing all these operations on, on the identity matrix. Okay. Then you can, you can now, now D inverse is very easy to calculate. So, so, so then you can just say that A inverse equal to D inverse R. Okay. So, so by, by using these row and column operations, you can calculate the inverse of a matrix. Now, in addition to this, there is also uh, there is also a simple formula for calculating the inverse. That is what we'll discuss next. Okay. So the inverse of this matrix, the inverse of this matrix. So if if I call if I say a is equal to a one one, a one two, one n, a two one, a two two, a two n. A n one, A n two, A n n. Then, then you can show that A inverse is equal to one by determinant of A, and you get a matrix. Okay. And the matrix you get here is the following: you get capital A one one. And then, and then the off diagonals you get capital A of two one, and here you get capital A of one two, and all the way up to capital A of n one, and here you get capital A of one n. Notice, uh, notice the the element of the inverse corresponds to capital A of one one n. Okay, so capital A of one n, not n one. A i j equal to cofactor of A i j. Okay, so we already we already defined what the cofactor is. Okay, so so A i so capital A i j is the cofactor of A i j. So for example, if you want to calculate the cofactor of A two one, then you delete this row and this column, and the resulting matrix that you get, you take the determinant of that matrix. Okay, so that is the that is the that, that is the cofactor with the with the appropriate sign, sign which will be plus or minus one. Okay, so 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 if you know the cofactors of each of these elements, then you can calculate the inverse of a matrix. Okay, now uh, in order to calculate the cofactors, you need to calculate uh, the determinant of an n minus one by n minus one matrix. Okay. So, we need to calculate the de determinant of A and then for each of the cofactors you need to calculate the determinant of a of an n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix. And uh, it is found that uh, numerically for large matrices this procedure is not very efficient. So, so if, you, if you want to invert large matrices then this procedure turns out to be hugely inefficient whereas it is much easier to use a procedure like this where you keep doing row and column operations and to, to convert a to a diagonal matrix. Next, we look at the uh, at an example of the of calculation of the of the inverse. So, I, I let my matrix be A is equal to 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, minus 4, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, 0, 3, 0. So, this is my matrix A and uh, you are asked to calculate the inverse of this matrix. Okay. So, let us try to do it using both the methods. So, first let us use the formula. So, using formula okay. So, in order to use a formula you need to calculate the determinant of A and you need to calculate the determinant of each of these cofactors. Okay. Uh, now let's try to calculate the determinant of A. I mean that is that's going to be a long procedure, but uh, when you do that procedure and you calculate both the determinant of A and each of the cofactors of A, okay, you you will get the inverse. So 
what I'll do here is I'll look at the cofactors one by one. So let's calculate the cofactor of the first element. So the cofactor of this element is denoted by A11 and this is equal to the determinant formed by of the matrix formed by deleting the rows and columns. Okay. So, so if you delete these rows and columns, then you get the matrix 2, 3, minus 4, 3, 3, 1, 0, 3, 0. So you get this matrix and, uh, and, and it is the determinant of this matrix multiplied by minus 1 raised to, this is 1, 1, so it is 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay. And you can show this that uh, this is equal to 2 times, uh, well, well I think easiest is to use this row. If you bring this row on top, then you can calculate the determinant using this row. So this is equal to determinant of 0, 3. 0, 2, 3, minus 4, 3, 3, 1. So, so by cyclically permuting the rows, then I do not change the determinant. Okay? So, then I can use this row and I can calculate the determinant as 3 into minus 4 into 3 is minus 12, minus 2 into 1, so minus 14, 3 into minus 14 is minus 42. So the into 3 is minus 42. Okay. And now you can go ahead and, uh, and you can calculate each of the other cofactors. Okay. So, so you have to go step by step and calculate each of the other cofactors. Okay. And if you go ahead and go through that procedure, you will get that, uh, that A inverse. So if you go through this procedure one by one, I, I showed you how to calculate this cofactor. Then you have to go ahead and calculate the cofactors of each of the each of the sixteen elements, okay? And uh, when you when you do that process, what you'll get is that A inverse is equal to, and uh, you you go through that procedure, and also and and after that you you divide by the determinant of this matrix. Then the answer turns out to be. Minus five by four, two, one. Minus five by eight, one zero. Seven by six, five by six. And finally, 1 by 8, 0, 0. Okay. So that is the determinant of this matrix and, uh, and, and, you, and you can get this by using the formula. Okay. Next, let us see how we will do it using, using the method of Gauss elimination. Okay. So in order to use Gauss elimination, what we have to write is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, minus 4, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, 0, 3, 0, A inverse equal to identity matrix, So, so this is the this is the the basic formula that we start with. And now, what we want to do is to convert this to a diagonal matrix using row operations. So, the first operation you'll do is you want to convert this one to zero. So, you subtract subtract uh, this row from this row. So, when you do that, you get one, two, three, four. And when you subtract this row from this row, you'll get zero, 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 minus eight. Next, you want to convert this to 0. So, you subtract this row from this row. So, you get 0, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, 1 minus 4 is minus 3. And you subtract twice this row from this row. So, you get 
0, uh, 2 times 2 is minus uh, 4, so 0 minus 4 is minus 4, 3 minus 6 minus 3, 0 minus 8 minus 8. And this times A inverse is equal to the matrix on the right. Now, uh, what we did is from, from this row, we have to subtract this row. So, you get so you get minus 1, 1, 0, 0. And you subtract again, again, again you subtract this row. So, you get minus 1, 0, 1, 0. And from this row, you subtract twice this row. So, you get minus 2, 0, 0, 1. Next, what we want to do is to is to make this element zero. So, in order to make this element zero, you you have to subtract this. But uh, unfortunately, this is zero. So, so we cannot use this row to subtract this row to to eliminate this element. Okay. So, so let's go ahead and try to convert this to zero. So, if you want to convert this element to zero, then uh, what? If you want to convert this element to zero, what you'll do is you'll add four times this row. So, if you do that, then uh, so you get 0. So, when, when you add 4 times this row, you will get 0 here, 4 times this row, you will get 0. 4 times this, you'll get minus 3, Th uh, minus 8 plus 4 into minus 3. So, minus 8 minus 12 minus 20. So, this way you can go ahead and you can convert this element to 0. Now, the same thing has to be done on this side too. So, this into so here you have not touched any of these elements. But now, now you subtract it, you, or, or you added four times this row, so minus two, minus four, so that becomes minus six, zero, four, one. Okay. Then, uh, then again, you find that you find that you cannot convert this to zero using this row. Okay. So then, our next strategy is to is to try to convert this element to zero using the row below. Okay, so, we convert this to 0 using the row below and, uh, and that will ensure that, uh, that these elements are not affected. So, you go ahead, you will convert this row to 0 using, using this row. So, what we do next is to, is, to, is to convert all the terms on the upper diagonal, upper diagonal to 0 and to do that, you start with this. So, so if, you want to, if you want to convert this to 0, you multiply, you multiply this row by 20, this row by 3 and you subtract the two rows. So, when I multiply this row by 20, I will get minus 60 and I subtract 3 times this row. So, I will get 0 here. When I multiply this by 20, I will get 0 and I subtract 3 times this. So, 3 times minus 3 is 9, uh, 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. So, 0 minus minus 9 is plus 9. Okay. Similarly, when I multiply this by 20, I will get 20 okay. and minus, minus 0 is 20. Okay, so, that is what I will get. So, this times A inverse is equal to 1 0 0 0 minus 1 1 0 0 minus 6 0 4 0 and then, and then what I will get here is, uh, is 20 times this. So, 20 times minus 1 is minus 20 and uh, plus 6 times 3, 18. So, that is minus 2. And here it will be 0 because both were zeros. In this case, 20 times 20 times 1 is 20, 20 minus 12 is 8. And in this case, oh, I, don't want. I had uh, minus 3. Okay, so so you go through this procedure. I mean, I, I won't go through all the details, but uh, but you but then you convert each of these elements to zero, okay, till you finally get a diagonal matrix, okay.
okay you, you we still have to convert now now we can convert this element to zero okay uh, or, or 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 it's better to con to convert this to zero so if you want to convert this to zero then you'll do 1 2 3 4 so to convert this to zero you multiply this row by 5 and subtract this row into 2 so you'll get 0 so this row in, this into 5 is 0 uh, plus plus 6 0 0 0 Okay, now I can convert this to zero using this row. So, so I have to do the same thing on the right. I won't go through this. But if I, when I convert this to zero, then I'll use uh, three into this minus two into this. So when I use three into this, eighteen minus eighteen, I'll get zero. This will remain zero. This will give me minus twenty. So one. So th this will be zero. So, 2 into this minus 40, 0, 0. Okay, and, and you have to do the corresponding operations here. Now, now you can convert, convert uh, this element to 0 using this row. So, so when you do this, the, you do 2 into this plus this, then uh, this will be unchanged, this will be unchanged, this will be unchanged, and uh, only this element will go, go to 0. Then you can convert, uh, once, once this element is 0, you can convert this to 0, and you can go through this whole, whole procedure till you get a diagonal matrix. So both these methods are, uh, are uh, fairly straightforward to implement, and it turns out that uh, nu numerically it is, it is the method of, of this Gauss-Jordan Gauss elimination which is favored. The next concept involving matrices is that of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So suppose you have a square matrix A, okay, A is a square matrix, okay. Then uh, there exists, so, so if, if, so find a column matrix X and a scalar lambda such that A times X equal to lambda times X. Okay. So then X is called eigen vector of A and lambda is called eigen value of A. So the important thing about eigenvalues and eigenvectors is that suppose you so suppose you are a given you are given a matrix, okay? Then uh, there exists this x and lambda, okay? So from a matrix you can calculate both its eigenvector and the eigenvalue, okay? So uh, and and I should I should uh, I should emphasize lambda is called eigenvalue of a corresponding to to eigenvector x okay so so when you say ax is equal to lambda x okay then uh, lambda is the, is the eigenval eigenvalue corresponding to the eigenvector x okay now in general a matrix has many eigenvalues and eigenvectors many many pairs of eigenvalues and eigenvectors and so if you have a matrix, it can have many different eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, so you can write A times x1 is equal to lambda x1, A times x2 
equal to lambda times x 2 or, or lambda lambda 1 x 1 lambda 2 x 2. Okay. So, so these are pairs of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, along with an eigenvalue you should always have an eigenvector. Okay. It is not uh, it is not enough to say that this is an eigenvalue, this is an eigenvalue with this eigenvector. It is not an eigenvalue for any other eigenvector. Okay. It is an eigenvalue only for eigenvector x 1 and so on. Now, in general if we have an n by n matrix, matrix can have up to n eigenvalues n eigenvalues and that implies that there are also n eigenvectors corresponding to these n eigenvalues there are n eigenvectors okay now we notice we notice that this definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors has uh, there is there, there is something that is not uh, completely specified with respect to the eigenvector so in order to see that uh, suppose i multiply x suppose i say y equal to some scalar scalar times x okay so y is some scalar multiplied by x then uh, a times y is equal to a times scalar times x okay this is equal to c times a into x so this is just multiplying by a scalar and uh, multiplying by a matrix by a scalar is a commutative operation so i can switch these and so and so what i get is this is equal to c times lambda x or equal to lambda times cx equal to lambda times y so in other words a y equal to lambda y. Okay. So, that means y has y is y is an eigenvector is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. Okay. So, now for the same eigenvalue you can define you can have infinitely many eigenvectors. So, by taking different values of c I can make I can make up infinitely many different eigenvectors. So, we say that so we say that the definition of eigenvectors is not unique. If you take an eigenvector you multiply it by constant you get an eigenvector with the same eigenvalue. Okay. So, corresponding to an eigenvalue you can you can calculate the eigenvector up to a constant. Okay. You cannot cal there is no unique eigenvector. Okay, but, but uh, up to a constant you can calculate this eigenvector. Okay. Okay. So, the next thing is how do we calculate eigen, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. So, how do we calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors and in order to do that we start with we will we'll start with calculation of eigenvalues. And uh, this procedure is uh, is fairly straightforward. What we what we say is you have a times x equal to lambda x implies a times x minus lambda times x equal to zero. And now and now I can take uh, a, a, I can I can write this as a times x minus lambda times i x where i is the identity matrix equal to 0. So, i okay. So, i is the identity matrix and this implies that uh, x times a minus lambda i equal to 0. So, this eigenvalue equation this is the eigenvalue equation and you can write it in this form a minus lambda i times x equal to 0. Okay. So, how does this help us calculate the eigenvalues? Okay, now, suppose a is equal to a a 1 1 a 1 2 up to a 1 n 
a21 a2 a2n and so on up to an1 up to ann so suppose this is my matrix a then uh, identity is just one along the diagonals and zero off diagonals so lambda i the matrix lambda times i is just lambda along the diagonals and zero for all the off diagonal elements so all the off diagonal elements are zero okay so lambda i is that and now if you subtract these two matrices then a minus lambda i is equal to a11 minus lambda a12 up to a1n a21 then a22 minus lambda a2n a n 1 a n 2 a n n minus lambda. So, a minus lambda i is the matrix where the diagonal elements of a are replaced by the elements minus lambda. So, you subtract lambda from the diagonal elements ok and now and now what you have is this you have this matrix a minus lambda i is this. So, so a minus lambda i multiplied by x equal to 0. So, you have this e expression lambda a 1 2 all the way up to a 2 n and you go a n 1 sorry a 2 1 up to a n n minus lambda. So, this multiplied by your matrix the, the vector x is equal to 0 ok. So, so, so we have this expression. So, so a minus lambda x is the 0 vector ok and uh, this is the x vector. So, so it will contain it will contain various elements. So, this is the x vector ok. Now, what we have is a system of equations system of equations ok and uh, and in this system of equations our right hand side is identically 0. So, in this system of equations we find that the right hand side is identically 0 ok and uh, this system of equations uh, has a solution where where each of these each of these quantities is 0. So, the, tri the trivial solution is that each of these quantities is 0 ok. So, if you think of these as the unknowns then the trivial solution is that each of these quantities is 0 each of these quantities is 0. Uh, but uh, if if there has to be a non trivial solution then the determinant of this matrix has to be equal to 0. So, what this means is that if this set of equations has to have a non trivial solution for these variables ok non trivial I mean all the variables is not are not equal to 0 then the determinant this the determinant of this matrix has to be equal to 0. So, if the determinant of this matrix is not equal to 0 then uh, then the only solution is the trivial solution ok and that is not useful because uh, because we know that our, our eigenvalue expression a x equal to lambda x is trivially satisfied by x equal to 0. So, so we are not interested in the solution where x equal to 0 ok. So, so in order for non trivial solutions to exist determinant of that determinant of this matrix is equal to 0. So, a 1 2 and a 2 1 a 2 2 minus lambda a 2 n a n 1 a n n minus lambda this determinant equal to 0. And so, and so this this looks like a polynomial of nth order in lambda. So, this is polynomial of order n in lambda ok. So, so, because you have terms like lambda square 
lambda all the way up to lambda raised to n. And polynomial in order of a lambda n equal to 0 implies n values of lambda. So, if you solve this polynomial, if you solve this equation, then you will get n different values of lambda that satisfy this. And so, you have n different eigenvalues. So, this, this gives me the n eigenvalues. Okay. Then, if you want to calculate the eigenvectors, once you have the eigenvalues, you can calculate the eigenvectors by substituting each of these in the eigenvalue equations. So, n eigenvalues, I will call them lambda 1 up to lambda n. Okay. Now, if you want to find the eigenvectors, then uh, you will say a times x 1 equal to lambda 1 times x 1. And uh, now, now, you can solve this equation for x 1. So, solve for x 1. x 1. Okay. And you repeat for each of the eigenvalues. So, we get n eigenvectors x 1, x 2, x n. Okay. So, this is the procedure for solving the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of any matrix. Okay, so, so in the next class, we will look at uh, certain special matrices, which will be live, which are called as orthogonal Hermitian and unitary matrices. Okay, so, uh, so, so this is all you can you, you can practice various problems involving eigenvalues and eigenvectors and calculating matrix inverse and so on. Okay, so you refer to any of the textbooks and uh, you can do a lot of practice problems. Okay, but uh, in the next class, we'll go to uh, discussion of. Uh, various special matrices, which are called as orthogonal matrices. Then we'll talk about Hermitian matrices and unitary matrices.